And our chief legal correspondent, Jan Crawford, joins us from the Supreme Court. Jan, what's the process for appointing a new Supreme Court justice? And is there a short list of potential nominees? Well, I mean, first of all, I think, you know, in a reg there's in a regular situation and then there is this political fight, which I think is really going to be unprecedented. So we've got a guideline for what's going to happen, uh, but we may have to throw a lot of that out, out of the window. I mean, the president is expected to make a, a nomination in the next couple weeks and then it would go up to the Senate uh, and the Senate would do its investigation. And then the Judiciary Committee uh, typically would hold hearings and then they would have a vote and then it would go to the full Senate uh, for more debate and potentially a vote. But here, I think it is unclear whether Senate Republicans will even schedule hearings on President Obama's nominee. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said that this should wait until the next president takes office. And so uh, you see all kind of leading Republicans in the Senate. I mean, these are senior members of the Senate, too, on that Judiciary Committee saying that they will uh, oppose any effort to confirm this nominee, no matter who it is. Now, the president, as you said, does have a kind of starting to develop this working short list of potential uh, nominees. Many of those are federal appeals court judges. They've been confirmed by the Senate before. Uh, but if you look back in history, uh, someone may be confirmed unanimously for the lower courts. That's a whole different ballgame once you get to the Supreme Court. I think the most interesting thing to keep in mind about that, Justice Clarence Thomas was confirmed by a voice vote to the federal appeals court, and we saw the battle over his nomination. Yeah, you know, in listening to the conversations about the political fight to come, I'm hearing things like epic battle, bloodbath. You would think you were talking about a blockbuster movie if you didn't know any better, the, the uh, hyperbole here. Uh, but let's talk about the impact to the country if the Senate really does block President Obama's eventual nominee. And there are then eight Supreme Court justices sitting on the court. What happens then? Well, I mean, those cases, and I, and I think it would be very difficult in a good year for the president to get anyone confirmed, assuming everyone was on the same page, who would be up here and deciding cases this term. I mean, the term will end in June. And these lifetime appointments to the Supreme Court, those take months, even when everybody is in complete agreement, which, of course, they're not here. So I think what's going to happen is you've got a lot of controversial cases this term on huge hot button social issues, whether it's affirmative action or abortion, a voting rights, another Obamacare case. We thought those cases, uh, most of them would be decided five to four uh, with conservatives and most of them probably carrying the day. Now, with Scalia's uh, death, those likely, or many of them likely, will be four to four, a tie. So the lower court decision would stand uh, and there would be no national precedent in, in those situations. So that would be, I think, the short-term impact this term. But, you know, the loss of Scalia for this court is so much you know, bigger than just one term because if President Obama, and this is why the stakes are so high for Republicans and Democrats, if President Obama were to, to nominate his replacement and that person were to be confirmed, that would change the balance of the Supreme Court. It now tilts conservative, that would shift the court to the left. And so all of these decisions that we now see coming out in a conservative direction would then be liberal victories. And that's why Republicans are united at this point to say this is too important to let this president make that decision in the middle of an election. We should wait for the next president. That's what Mitch McConnell is saying. All right, Jan Crawford, thank you so much.